Welcome to a very special event. This is Patricia Fripp and I am interviewing Marc LeBlanc who is a very well-known professional in the National Speakers Association in the world of growing your business. Now you might be thinking, Patricia, what do you mean by having a photograph of Tom Cruise behind you? And why would a mature woman like you be wearing a t-shirt that's obviously a big rocker t-shirt? Well, for a couple reasons. Let me wheel over here because I am interviewing who had the best introduction into a convention I've ever seen. Please let me introduce you to past president of the National Speakers Association, Marc LeBlanc. Now Marc, tell us what is the story behind the t-shirt and then you'll tell us the story behind the photograph. Well, I sure can. Thank you, Patricia. In 2007 and 2008, I had the honor of serving as president of the National Speakers Association and put together an amazing team. And uh, as you recall, we had well over 2,000 people in New York City for the NSA convention in August of 2008. And as most presidents tend to come out uh, and do a four, five, six minute welcome speech, I came out uh, dressed as Tom Cruise in the movie Risky Business. Our theme for that year, my presidential theme, was NSA Rocks uh, as on your t-shirt. And so the creative idea uh, was given to me to slide out on the main stage and uh, with no pants on. And uh, they snapped that photo and ended up uh, auctioning off uh, and raising money uh, people uh, donated money to the NSA Foundation to get a framed photograph, uh, the same one that you have. And let it go on notice that I was the one who went up to Stacy and said, I will donate $250 if I can have that photograph. And so they, they did turn it into an auction item and more people have it. However, I don't know if everyone has it lovingly in their office the entire time. I don't think they do. In fact, I will go down in history as the uh, NSA president who gave the shortest speech in the <laughs> history of NSA because when I turned, the only two words I said was NSA rocks and 2,000 people went crazy. It was spectacular. And then, of course, after that fabulous convention, the economy went to hell. But we won't, that had nothing to do with our convention. You, being the disciplined person you are, you spend a lot of time and energy getting your legs in shape. Well, I did. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a walker. And uh, that summer, I was in training for walking the 500 mile. Uh, Camino de Santiago pilgrimage across northern Spain and so um, I was in pretty good shape when I slid out on the main stage. And I own a very good book about that walk. Anyway, well we have another important member in our team. Let me introduce to you Paul and Paul will you tell our friends and we have plenty of people online, others will watch later about how to ask questions and answer the polls. Absolutely. Hello everyone. To the right of the video play that you see right now is a chat box. You can enter your short specific questions into the chat box and we'll answer it during the call. Also, we will have polls throughout the call, which is a yes or no answer, and then you click vote, and then you'll click back on the chat tab to return to the chat window. Again, if you have any questions, just keep them short and specific, and we'll answer them during the call. Good. Well, Paul, uh, Paul uh, we'll, we'll set up the first polling question was, have you heard Marc LeBlanc speak? And, of course, Marc, not only 
are your past president and very popular speaker. You are known really for helping speakers, consultants, and small business professionals grow their business. In fact, your best selling book is Growing Your Business. And would you like to start with a snapshot of your life? Because you didn't. You ended up past president and an expert and the uh, co-owner uh, of Indie Books, who is a, a, a streaming partner with Lady and the Champs conference coming up. But can you turn the clock back and tell our friends how you started? Because I believe your your speaking and consulting career started at 23. Um, well, that's correct. At the age of 21, I was introduced to the National Speakers Association, and I joined NSA uh, when I was 22 years old. And quite frankly, I was I had a job once for about six months, and I found out at a very early age that I was unemployable. And uh, in 1983 was my first National Speakers Association convention. Uh, in San Francisco where I had the honor of uh, meeting you and having lunch with you at the final uh, luncheon. Uh, a great honor. I think I was 22. I think you were 17 uh, at the time. And um, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful ride. Uh, certainly I've had my, my good years and my not so good years. I was a, a part-time speaker for approximately 10 years while I owned another uh, business, a creative and uh, graphics and printing business and then in uh, 22, 23 years ago I sold that business to speak and coach and write full-time. My company Small Business Success is headquartered out of uh, Minneapolis. I've coached over a thousand independent professionals on starting and growing their business or practice. I've given over a thousand presentations and for today I mean I really am here to talk about my book Growing Your Business uh, not so much uh, about the book, but as what happened as a result of the book. And that's really the message I want to bring to our viewers and listeners today is the power of what can happen as a result of writing a book. Good. And Paul, can you tell us, let's have a look. Okay, 56% have heard you speak, 44% haven't heard you speak. Good. Well, I remember at lunch in Minneapolis with Dan Janelle, I asked you, what is the biggest mistake that most speakers make who are going to write? Can you remember what you told me? I sure can. And most speakers, and I'll include consultants and coaches and, and all kinds of professionals in that, uh, in that group as well, the biggest mistake they make is they write the wrong book. Um, or, in fact, worse, they don't write the book that is inside of them. I guess that would be an even bigger mistake. Uh, but they often come out of the chute and they, they write the wrong book. And can you give me a specific example? Well, um, for me, you know, and I started to fall into that trap too. I was, I was coaching and, and speaking on growing a business. Uh, but I was trying to write a book about something that I was interested in that had really nothing to do with my business, more of a legacy type book. And one day I woke up and I had a number of different topics and I thought, well, what I really want to do is speak 50 times a year on growing your business. And I was trying to come up with a fancy name uh, for my book, you know, take your business to the moon or you know, reaching the next level of success. And I woke up one day and I thought, if, if I want to speak on growing a business, why not write the book, Growing Your Business? Mm -hmm. And much to my surprise, no one had written a book with the exact title, Growing Your Business. Um, and so the power of a book and presentation, same title, um, mm -hmm. is a one-two punch that you cannot uh, beat as well as the trifecta having the domain name. So um, I speak 50 times a year uh, titled Growing Your Business. I wrote the book Growing Your Business. I have the domain name growingyourbusiness.com. In fact, I often tell people, if you cannot get the .com, then change the title. Mm. 
Wow. So you don't say get the dot net dot dot biz. No. Um, as much as those uh, domain uh, suffixes are out there, um, the dot com is still the gold standard and I believe will be for some time to come. All right. Well, why don't we, Paul, set up the poll is have you read Mark's book, Growing Your Business? And you'll have a, a minute or so to fill those in. So, Mark, we promised that we are going to tell them, our listeners, how to position yourself for higher fees. So are you telling me to do that, you really have to have the book that you're associated with? Um, yes, I believe, as well as my partner, Henry DeVries, hmm. who's a co-owner of Indie Books International, that nothing will serve you better as a presenter, coach, consultant, speaker than having a book. Um, it is the ultimate marketing tool. We also feel that speaking is the ultimate marketing strategy, whether you're speaking for free uh, in a target-rich environment uh, in front of prospects or you're speaking for a fee. But there's a lot of power in uh, let's get the guy who wrote the book growing your business versus another marketing expert. So a lot of power and a lot of credibility comes with writing the book that you also are speaking on the same subject matter. So are you saying, one, if we're going to position ourselves an expert and demand higher fees, that is one of the number one key ideas? It is the number one. Perfect. It is more, it is more powerful than a website. It is more powerful than social media, than publicity. Having the credibility of the book behind you is number one. Hmm. Good. And... Uh, Ma, uh, Paul, how many people percentage-wise have read Mark's book, Growing Your Business? I see. 25. Uh, 25, well, 75% have not. So for the 75% who have not, and I would put my hand up as reading it, can you, Mark, share three of your best ideas from that book? From growing your business, um, number one is focus on your monthly optimistic number from a selling perspective versus an annual goal. Mm. Uh, throw away the concept of the calendar year and the annual goal and focus on your target uh, selling or sales number every 30 days. I believe the secret to your success lies in the phrase every 30 days. Mm. Number two, every morning, Ask yourself the AM question. What am I doing today to book my monthly optimistic number of X? And just fill in the blank. Don't change the AM question word for word. What am I doing today to book my optimistic number of X? And number three, write down three high value activities that can move you forward in the direction of booking your monthly optimistic number. I was at my breakfast club this morning and one of my, after the meeting, one of my friends helped me, I had helped him put together an outline which he was using the marketing copy that would be in, in videos and one of his key points which made so much sense and it really is a message that I need to focus on and I believe this is a great way to say what you just said Antonio said what is the focus of your focus so in other words we need to focus on what is this 30-day target and then on a daily basis what is the focus of that focus boy that that is incredibly insightful uh, because the more focused you are, the easier everything becomes. And too often professionals of all stripes suffer from what I call FDD, or Focus Deficit Disorder. Um, they're, excited about so <laughs> they're excited about so many things that, that part of the challenge is getting them to understand that, you know, what is your primary profit center? 
And what is your primary offering in your primary profit center? And put the lion's share of your focus around that specific uh, program or presentation or service. And it doesn't mean that you're, you know, saying yes to one does not mean you're saying no to the others. I have five profit centers in my business and I love them all, but I have a primary profit center and I have a primary offering in my primary profit center. Think of, think of a, a, a well-known restaurant or one of your favorite restaurants. They are often known for something. They have the best hamburger, the best bowl of chili, the best apple pie. They have a signature dish. And if you put your focus behind your signature dish, you will have a greater likelihood of getting where you want to go. Wow. You know one of my good buddies, Susan Rowan, is a best-selling author. Her famous book that is is a to write a, a book that's a bestseller is difficult. To write a book that sells for 25 years is a whole different feat. And then to be asked to rewrite it. Now you have consistently been selling your book, Growing Your Business, for 15 years. Now you and Susan are both best-selling authors. However, there's a difference. And can you point out the difference of your two styles and approaches? Well, I sure can. And uh, uh, Susan is incredibly smart and talented and wise and wrote a great book um, using the traditional publishing path. She has an agent. She uh, has a major publisher, a major distribution uh, outlets and stores around North America and most likely the world. Um, the other path that is more accessible to people like me is the path of independent uh, publishing. Some would refer to it as self-publishing, but there is a difference. Most of the time when we self-publish or when somebody self-publishes their book, they're essentially cobbling together uh, a graphic designer over here and an editor over here and a printer over here, and they're self-publishing a book. Um, independent publishing is publishing your book to traditional book standards mm. and surrounding yourself with the right team of resources that can help turn a good book into a bestseller. Um, I am an independently published author, not a traditionally published author. And I think the rules today or the opportunities today are to make more profit with independent publishing uh, versus the traditional publishing path. There are 300 and some thousand uh, books uh, published every single year. And to crack that traditional a publishing path is very difficult, um, and Susan has been able to do that. Uh, but those stories are becoming farther and fewer uh, between. And I always tell Susan, based on all the stories and the horror stories she's told me, you you are a public. She is a poster child for self-publishing, because, or as you would call independent publishing, because to do that, it is not as easy as you would think. There are trials and tribulations, and it's, it's not easy even when you're successful at it. Now, you have a certain niche even within that independent world is that is that you sell volume books every month. Tell us how you do that. Well, my book, Growing Your Business, came out 15 years ago, and over the last 15 years, I have averaged a quantity order, typically an order of 50 copies or more, every week for 15 years. Um, nearly 800 quantity orders uh, since the book came out, and, and people always ask me, how does that happen? Because my book, Growing Your Business, uh, and I, I hate to say this, but I'll, 
but this is for the benefit of our listeners, is no literary work of genius. It's a good book with some good tips, a great story in chapter two, and can certainly help a business owner. Um, but the, the magic of the book is really the fact that I'm still speaking 50 times a year on what? On growing your business. And the second thing is I came up with a brilliant, uh, probably by accident, but a brilliant quantity pricing plan that, that anybody can follow. And it's simply this. I mean, my book, Growing Your Business, uh, sells for $8.00. Um, but if somebody orders 25 or more, they get 25% off. If they order 50 or more, they get 50% off. And no, that doesn't mean if they order 100, they get 100% off. Um, but it is not uncommon for professionals to buy a quantity order of my book to give to their clients and or to sell in their audiences. And yeah, that that brings up a point because the next time we will probably be together is at Lady and the Champs conference, which is next February. And my partners, Darren LaCroix, Ed Tate, Craig Valentine, uh, we have a book, Speaker's Edge. And many of our community and world champions edge, until they write their own book, they buy ours to sell to their audiences when they are speaking about speaking. So obviously you we have the same formula with that. Very much so. Good. Now let me go back because you told us focus on focus on the 30 days and then we got to the focus on the focus of your focus. Good. What's another idea from that book? Um, one of the strategies that I'm known for is what I call my target 25 advocate strategy. Mm. And essentially what that means is put together a list of the 25 most important people in your life or in your world and connect with your group of advocates every 30 days to remain top of mind and that can lead to m stimulating more referrals um, than you can possibly uh, imagine and mm. it doesn't mean to ask your advocates every 30 days for referrals but as you well know time goes by so fast in fact it seems like yesterday we were uh, at the Westin Hotel uh, for in 1983 for our NSA convention the years have just flown by and our greatest fans our champions and our cheerleaders we can blink and a year goes by and mm -hmm. if we don't take responsibility for staying top of mind with the people who care about us and our work um, we're losing um, sight of our biggest cheerleaders yeah, one of my fripicisms is it's not our clients or prospects job to remember us it's our obligation and responsibility to make sure they don't have the chance to forget us That's exactly right good another idea and then we're going and then we'll open it up and see if there are any questions so feel free type your questions in the chat box and Paul will read them to us later short specific questions based on what Mark said or anything that triggers that you really need to know from the expert. So next idea Mark. The next idea is to understand that you have 7 to 17 seconds to get the ear of a prospect and I call that the attraction phase of the marketing and selling process and if you cannot get their ear in 7 to 17 seconds, speaking longer is usually not going to do it. And so I talk about creating what I call a defining statement. And a defining statement is a one sentence answer to the question, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And I outline seven rules in the book, Growing Your Business, for creating a great uh, defining statement. and my defining statement is I work with people who want to start a business and small business owners who want to 
grow their business. Different than a tagline, different than a mission statement, different than a vision statement, it's just a simple answer to a simple question, what do you do? Mm. Uh, Paul, are there any questions? At this time, there are not any questions. However, Mark did say that he purchased quantity orders of his book. Well, good. Good. Now, why don't we set up a poll here just to ask our audience if they have written a book? Just as a matter of interest, have they written a book? All right. Now, coming up in the new year, I believe, you have a new book, Growing Your Business When You Are the Business. Why don't you give us a couple of pointers out of that book that maybe isn't in the first one? I sure can. Um, I'm very excited about my newest book, Growing Your Business When You Are the Business, because it's aimed right at the heart and mind and soul of the independent professional, the independent distributor, the independent dealer. And I outline nine best practices for growing your business under the umbrellas of money, focus, and marketing. After having given a thousand presentations with good content and uh, coaching a thousand independents myself, um, I've identified the nine best practices that can make the biggest difference in whether or not you get where you want to go. Well, if we promise to buy your book when it comes out, would you give us three of them? I sure will. Um, the best practice, uh, one best practice under the money umbrella is a very simple one. It's to know your numbers. Mm. Sounds very simple, but many small business owners and the lion's share of independent professionals are not even on QuickBooks, believe it or not. And so if you're not spending 30 minutes every 30 days looking at your numbers, um, how can you make the critical decisions that you need to make around focus? And so I also walk them through a very simple way to reshape their profit and loss um, so that they can see not only what they are spending on business development, but what they're spending on office admin expenses, as well as what they are paying themselves. Professionals either take too much too soon for themselves or too little for too long. And finding that right blend and balance uh, is a juggling act. And so reshaping your profit and loss and knowing your numbers um, and looking at them every 30 days rather than at tax time will help you make better decisions in real time. Wonderful. Under, under All right. The no. Back to you. Under the focus umbrella, uh, best practice number three is create the profile of your ideal week. We somehow, uh, with, with, we're tethered to our laptops, our iP iPads, our smartphones, and we feel as if we need to be tethered and accessible 24-7, 365. Well, if an ER doctor is not on call 24-7, 365, you and I do not need to be accessible uh, that much as well. And so uh, people are getting burned out today uh, on the quest to reaching their potential because they're focusing on the wrong activities and they have no boundaries between their home and work life. So I talk about creating uh, the profile of your ideal week to make you as effective and as efficient as you can possibly be. Now, now just as a matter of interest, 50% of our listeners and friends have written a book, 50% haven't. Could you give a couple of pieces of advice to those who have and a couple of pieces of who, those who haven't? For those that have not written a book, I would be interested to know how many of them are thinking about writing a book and or have started writing a book and somehow got stuck and stalled out. But my right, so 
Well, and let's get Paul to actually set up a poll. So it's, how would you like to phrase that, Mark? Are you planning to write a book? So whatever it is up until the point that you actually got a book to print. Got it. That would be a great way. Are you planning to write a book? Okay, good. Okay. So back to for those people who are planning to write a book and are not yet published, the best piece of advice is get it done. Mm. But you only have to get to 80% of the way there and surround yourself with the right resources that can pull you across the finish line. Most uh, first-time authors get excited about writing their book, they get about 50% done and they get stuck. Mm -hmm. And then time goes by and they get recommitted to it and they get to about 80 or 90% done and they stall out. Mm -hmm. And that's because they're trying to write it, edit it and proof it all themselves. And so getting somebody that can help pull it across the finish line is a uh, uh, is, it a, is a very good suggestion to probably 80% of those that have started and fizzled on publishing their own book. In fact, get it done in the next 12 months. Mm. Quite frankly, you don't need 12 months to write a book. Um, with the benefits of independent publishing and the resources that are out there, if you sit down uh, and, and get cranking on it, you can write a 10,000 word manuscript or a 20,000 word manuscript in the next 90 days. So my suggestion would be get some help, start writing or get back to writing, write the manuscript in 90 days and let somebody else help you take it home. Which will so come to, we will pick it up, yes. Sorry Paul, did Paul speak? All right, yeah, the polls are up. So 94% are planning to write a book. So they're going to really like to hear what we're getting to next. Now, for yes. those, just to finish the loop, for those who have written a book, what advice would you give them? Without seeing their book, I'm going to assume that it's a good book. Okay and that it will serve them well. So let's just pretend we have two different groups in that category. Group A has written a good book with a great title, a great subtitle, and a great table of contents. Mm. For those who fit into that category, the best tip that I can give you today is mail a complimentary copy every single day to your right fit prospect. Just get into the habit of mail a book a day to a right fit speaking or training or consulting or coaching prospect. I call that the storm starter strategy using a book as a mailing piece. For the other group in this category that may not have written a book that is serving them well, it might be um, one of two things. They might not have written a good book, mm -hmm. but secondly, they might have written a good book that is not positioned properly. I worked with a woman on the East Coast in the last 12 months who wrote an amazing book with a, a, a terrible title and a <laughs> terrible cover design. And my recommendation to her was grind up the books and throw them away yeah. and then republish the exact same book and I gave her a, I gave her the title I gave her the subtitle and six months later she republished the book with a new title and it's selling seven to ten times more today than it was 12 months ago so sometimes people are writing a very good book that is not serving them well and that's what our, our, our mission or our passion is at Indie Books International, is making sure that professionals write the right book. Which leads us to, let, first of all, we're going to go over, just for a little variety, we're going to go to a website and show them where I am going to be seeing you next. 
and then we can tell them about your absolutely you are the only you and Henry are the only people in the world who use this marketing strategy that works for you that the rest of us think you're crazy but it works for you so you're not so hang on with me I'm going to share my screen and so Paul is going to make sure that so you should now be seeing my screen of lady and the champs conference can you see that Paul yes I can good well if you can then the rest of the world can now you've heard us talk about uh, my partners Mark and I will be together at Lady and the Champs Conference, which is the speaking event, the most highest caliber, high content, most fun, lowest investment of the speaking world. You can see it's February the 28th, 1st of March, 2015. If you're an EDGE member, or you can certainly join for a dollar and try us out and be an EDGE member, you can make it a three-day conference. Where is it? The Palms Hotel in Las Vegas. There is Darren LaCroix, Ed Tate, Craig Valentine, and Fripp. And you would say, oh, Fripp, you look so good there. Well, you <laughs> do realize that you can retouch photographs a lot easier than the face. Now, this might not be perfect on the screen as we're going down. The most important part you have to know is, is it's now 114 days to this great event in light. Las Vegas and you can click live to register now we're also going to for our friends and I know we have friends signed up that I met in England and Dublin and we have some of my Fripp virtual training members uh, who are in fact out of the country and we will be streaming it live so why don't you drop me an email at pfripp at frip.com and Cynthia our executive director is going to make sure that you have all the information on uh, streaming live you can actually watch this very cute video talking about it so I of course am the lady there are the champs we have other friends and relations my brother Robert Fripp internationally known guitarist of uh, King Crimson played with David Bowie and many other speakers. Tim Gard, one of the, probably the most popular speaker humorist in the country. We have great platinum partners, of course, PRPR, uh, Speaker Match, Direct Pay, and Disc.com, and streaming sponsor partners, which are me, Frip Virtual Training and many of our uh, attendees are my virtual training clients and PRPR and Indie Books International. And this is Mark and Henry DeVries. And while I am finding the agenda, in fact, well, we, I'm going to stop sharing and we'll come back to that in, in a minute because I want you to tell everybody about this unique, unique marketing model you have. Well, <laughs> well, it is unique, and people do think that we're crazy, uh, but we've put together a strategy that, that has worked incredibly well for us that we believe any professional can model. You know, part of our the challenge today is that people don't know who to trust. And they're often led to a loss leader workshop, and then they're put in a headlock at the end of it, and, you know, it's like speakers squeeze until people buy something. Well, we decided to go the opposite way, and approximately 20 times a year, we do a three-hour seminar titled the marketing with a book and speech summit the marketing with a book and speech summit about 20 times a year uh, will be in las vegas immediately following the lady in the champs conference and what makes this uh, offering so unique is not only do we not charge for the three-hour seminar we do not market or sell 
any of our services at this three-hour seminar. And even when we uh, promote that and tell people, we're not going to sell you anything at the seminar. They don't believe us. And at the end of the seminar, they're wondering how come they're not hearing about any packages or programs. And um, what has happened is, is that it's a complete give. It makes Henry and I 100% accountable to deliver. And we subscribe to a philosophy that, that really goes like this. If it's in your best interest, you will call us one day. Mm. We do make, you know, we bring a handful or two of books, and so we don't want to irritate people. Uh, by making them go to Amazon if they want to buy a copy of Growing Your Business. But we sell no services. There is no pitch of any kind. Um, and it's quite frankly, it's the most fun that Henry and I have uh, in our speaking career. And we do them in New York. We do them in San Francisco, Las Vegas, Chicago, Minneapolis, um, La Jolla, uh, Orange County. Um, it's a blast. Good. Well, while I go back and, sh and show them our agenda and where you will be on that agenda in Las Vegas, Mark, tell them where they would go to your website, what website, or how do they find out the list of cities where you will be, where you'll be delivering these. And, and I'll look at our seminar schedule or our summit schedule at www indiebooksinternational.com I-N-T-L indiebooksintl.com uh, for our upcoming summit schedule. We'll be in New York uh, coming up in uh, December in two months and then we'll be in Las Vegas with a Monday morning from 9 to noon um, summit. And the other thing Patricia, um, if I may be so bold, um, yeah. if, if anybody would like the ebook version of growing your business I would be happy uh, to send them to anybody listening to this uh, viewing this listening to this uh, now live or at a later date simply send an email mm -hmm. to either mark mark at smallbusinesssuccess.com or my assistant Kylie K Y L I E at smallbusinesssuccess.com and we will forward you the electronic version of my book Growing Your Business where you can learn more about the Target 25 Advocate Strategy, the seven rules for creating a, de a great defining statement, your optimistic number, the AM question, and high value activities. Perfect and I am sure uh, Paul, can you write that in the chat box so people can look at it, please? Absolutely. Let me, yeah, good. Let me go back to now. Hang on, now I got to do this right. I have to share my screen. And for those of you who do virtual meetings, can you see that, Paul? Yes, I can. Good. For those of you who do your own virtual meetings, it is always good to confirm with with your your co-host or the moderator that what you believe the audience is seeing, they really are. Because it's technology is not perfect, and as we're learning to master technology, we're not perfect. So as you can see, at the edge of some, which is for our World Champions Edge members. We have a whole day that we have some scheduled activities and you help select what we discuss. If you are not an Edge member, you can go to worldchampionsedge.com and get a trial membership for a dollar. My gosh, how can we afford to do it? Uh, and then, so you can see our Saturday agenda. We have keynote speeches. You can see Ed and, and Darren. And then we have breakout sessions. Now, all we have a lot of the breakout sessions will be in the main room and you'll be able to see them streaming. So, for example, with my brother Robert Fripp for Beginner Mastery, that will be streamed. And at the same time, there are two other breakouts going on that will be 
recorded. They'll be videoed, and so anyone who has the streaming option, or anyone who wants to buy it afterwards, can replay every single event from the conference, whether they were there or not. You see, uh, instant story generator, how to create stories from scratch, improve your audience's experience, a closer look at speaking success, uh, be a digital dynamo, and Darren LaCroix certainly is. Then, of course, we all get on stage for mini coaching, which is always an incredibly popular part of the program. People get up and deliver a couple of minutes, and, and we coach them. So again, uh, Craig's keynote and Tim Gard keynote. <coughs> More breakouts, even Cynthia's five steps to finding your perfect. Is it niche? Is that the correct way classy people say it, uh, Mark? Niche or niche? It's niche, isn't it? I've heard it niche, niche, niche. <laughs> um, we're speakers and we don't even know how to pronounce the word. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I believe it's niche. Uh, Robert Fripp and I will be delivering the opening keynote on Sunday. Uh, how to be a hero for more than one day. My brother played on David Bowie's Heroes, and we we take off on that idea. Then, of course, multiple streams of speaking income. Get coach to speak mini coaching and train the trainer. You will find all these events help you with your speaking or your business. And then, and we keep going, and now what we're encouraging you to do is when you book your ticket, you stay over for the the add-on, the partner add-on marketing with a book and a speech Summit, and again, there is no charge for this, and they will not sell. That is absolutely, I promise you, having attended the seminar, and I've been in the business for a long time, and it, it blew me away. And I really appreciated you even put me on the program as part of your, your panel for a little while. And it was great to have you there. Good. Well, uh, it really is a content rich whether you're fairly new or as seasoned as I am because I really need the message of watch the money focus target 20 I get easily distracted because I work on so many different projects so at this point uh, Paul can we get, can we see are there any questions that we need to answer I see there are quite a few coming in you pick the, the best. Um, well, the I think one of the most common questions that gets asked when it comes to writing a book is, what if you don't think you have anything worth writing about? And that's from Dave. Um, well, then I would take issue with Dave because if, if you didn't think you had anything worthwhile to write about, you probably would not have the idea or the dream of writing the book inside of you. Mm. And I and I often, I often use the phrase whizzy, and that is any person that has a body of content or work, um, and quite frankly, really at any stage along the way, um, you have enough wisdom, insights, strategies, stories, and ideas inside of you right now. You might not see the path for how to get it out of you, but that the good news is is that you can find someone to help you strategize and pull it out of you because you're just simply Dave you're too close to it now just picking up from from that indie books so tell us how would someone like Dave work with indie books well it it would start with what we call a book chat mm -hmm. and that's a 30 to 45 minute again non selling um, Henry and I will meet with anybody um, in the next, you know, 90 days or in the next 12 months, whenever the time is right, and we'll ask you a number of questions, particularly four uh, questions to help you get clarity around your book as well as your story. Um, 
But again, the important thing is it's not about the book for book's sake as much as, as it is about what can happen as a result of the book. Mm -hmm. And so for people like Dave and, you know, that's not an uncommon challenge. You've got it inside of you. You just may not be seeing it or have the confidence to feel like it has value. And that's why you need somebody like Henry or somebody like me or somebody else um, to pull it out of you. And is surely if, if Dave is a speaker, and I wish Dave this is, but if Dave is speaking, he is speaking about some subject of something of interest or his experience, and if the book is positioning you for higher fees, the book has to be tied into what Dave is speaking about. That's correct. And the other thing is that we often hear you that your book has to be 10 chapters, it has to sell for, you know, $22.95 to $34.95, it has to be a 50,000 word manuscript. Um, we're not talking about writing the next War and Peace. Our our recommendations are often, uh, well, number one, your first book is often your warm-up book. Mm. So get that out of the way. Your signature book may be your second book. My book never be the same based on my 500-mile trek across northern Spain is my signature book. Yeah. I just got a little bit lucky uh, with growing your business um, but I had some good people who guided me along the way 15 years ago. Um, so it really starts with a book chat, uh, book chat. But you're right, Patricia. Anybody who is already speaking, training, facilitating, coaching, or consulting, um, it's just a series of asking the right questions, formulating the stories. Our recommendation is 10,000 words for a $10 even book. Mm -hmm. 20,000 words for a $20 even book. No more 1995 or, um, you know, no more 1495. It's either a $10 bill even or it's a $20 bill even. Make it easy for people to pay. I like it. Good. More questions. Yes, I'm going to combine two. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. Cheryl Buckner asks, if she's writing an outlook uh, outline of her book or manifesto, approximately 5,000 words to use as a marketing tool, should she snail mail it to prospects or produce it via an ebook? And are ebooks as helpful? Um, yes and yes. Um, I believe you should have the the physical version of the book as well as the electronic version of the book. Um, for example, I just offered the ebook version to every listener for free. So there are opportunities to use the electronic version for promotion and certainly there are people who do make money um, with their ebooks. However, I've, I've yet to have somebody call me, in fact in 22 years or since the birth of electronic books, not one single person has ever said to me Oh my God, you have got to get this ebook. Not one single person. Nobody has said this is the greatest ebook in the world. You must have it. Um, it's, you know, we hear, a, we hear a lot about the popularity of Kindle books and ebooks, and, and I'm a fan. Um, but it's the physical version, the tangible expression of your work that is, that is going to help make you. The second thing is, Nobody's ever going to call you and say, I want 20 copies of your ebook to give us gifts here for the holiday season. So there's a time and a place for the ebook version, um, but start with the, the, the physical or tangible book, but it's a one two punch. Okay, good. Uh, Paul? Next question Have you turned your, your weekend small business development workshop into a home study product? And also remind them when your, ne your new book is going to be released. Oh, and I have a feeling I know who that is. Uh, <laughs> um, I've done a, a 113 uh, weekend seminars or weekend business development retreats uh, called the Achiever Circle. We're doing five of them in La Jolla next year. 
Um, I do not have it in a home study course yet, um, but that is on the drawing board. And the new book, Growing Your Business When You Are the Business, is available for pre-sale now. Oh. Um, we expect the electronic version and the Kindle version to be available at the end of December and the physical books to be mailed at the end of January. Okay. And, and are you taking pre-orders? Because I'm a girl that likes to circle and put yellow post-its and fold, fold over corners. Um, we are taking pre-orders. In fact, I'm um, um, happy to share with you, we already have three quantity orders of the new book, Sight Unseen. Wow. So you have positioned yourself as an authority for higher fees and people attending your workshops and wanting to consult with you and, 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 and. So you certainly know what you're talking about. Uh, we are getting towards where we've been, we've, we've been keeping our, our friends alive and hopefully very engaged for nearly an hour. We'll take a couple more questions. May I certainly direct everyone's attention to ladyandthechampsconference.com. In fact, uh, we might even, anyway, well, in a, can we set up a poll? Have you registered for hashtag LadyChamps15? I believe you have that. Uh, give it while you're bringing that up. What are a couple more questions that we need to answer for? We've got: Is the defining statement any different from what we call an elevator speech to get them to ask the next question? Okay, and do you have another one while you're setting up the poll? Yes, and is there a difference in approaching in approach with growing your business if you're providing a service versus providing a product? Okay, so Mark, you can handle those while Paul sets up the poll, which is, have you registered for hashtag LadyChamps15? And as you can see under my name when I'm speaking, the website is ladyandthechampsconference.com. Um, then if you're out of the country and want to be streaming, send me an email to pfrit at frit.com and I'll make sure you coordinate with Cynthia to make sure everything goes seamlessly for you. Back to you, Mark, to answer the tough questions. Number, the first question, is there a difference between a defining statement and an elevator speech? Um, the answer is yes. An elevator speech is more of what I call a defining paragraph, where a defining statement is a one-sentence uh, answer or response to the question, what do you do? It's not in Growing Your Business, my uh, current book, but in the new book, I will walk you through a seven-sentence format for creating a defining paragraph um, that will help make you more approachable in the marketplace. The concept of the typical elevator speech um, is, I, well, quite frankly, I don't think as effective. But an elevator speech would be a form of a paragraph. It's typically uh, 10 to 20 uh, sentences, the concept being you need to be ride an elevator with somebody and explain what you do on the way to the top floor. And I think it needs to be more succinct uh, than that. All right. So we're asking people, have they registered for Lady and the Champs? Uh, yes or no? Uh, that would be very interesting. 43% said yes. 57% you have a choice register now and come live or register and watch a streaming live and send me an email pfrip at frip.com Mark LeBlanc you are a streaming partner sponsor as Frip VT is a streaming partner sponsor we really appreciate your wisdom and your advice we had hundreds of sign up so people are very interested in the subject and so People should go to your website on indie books. Tell us about that. Um, our, web, our web 
website is Indie, I-N-D-I-E, Books, I-N-T-L, IndieBooksInternational.com. Um, is a new publishing company for independent authors. We start, we're less than a year old. We already have 30 authors uh, that we are working with. We're very excited about it because, quite frankly, again, we believe that nothing will serve you better as a marketing tool than your own book, and nothing will serve you better for higher fees or to market your services than a speech or a presentation. Well, Mark, if I don't see you before, I will see you in Las Vegas at Lady and the Champs. And we want, if the 43 people who have signed up, make sure you do not fly out till Monday afternoon. The 57% of you who still have to sign up, make your airline ticket to, to fly out when you do on Monday afternoon. This is Patricia Fripp. On behalf of Darren, Ed, Craig, Cynthia, and Gregory at World Champions Edge, we hope we'll see you in Las Vegas. And meanwhile, remember, what is the focus of your focus? Perhaps it should be go to ladyandthechampsconference.com and then indiebooksinternational.com. This is Patricia Fripp, and oh, we is one other part to push out. We have a, a pop in, don't we, uh, uh, Paul? Paul, a pop in tomorrow. I am delivering another event where I'm actually being interviewed, and this is more on the focus of how do we communicate to have good focus on our customers. I am being interviewed and uh, tell me when that's uh, pop-ins. Yes, there it is. Communicate with impact. How to be more powerfully persuasive in your presentations in any situation tomorrow, two o'clock Pacific. If you are interested, click on in your in the right side of your screen. I'm interested to get more information. I am the interviewee and Mark Thank you always for being a good friend, a good encourager, a good coach, a good reminder of what I need to be doing, a streaming partner, and just a, a great guy who will take off his pants on stage for a great opening. See you soon. Remember, focus on signing up. See you soon. Bye. Thank you, Paul.